charge? Yes, it's a positive charge. Okay. And the little zero? Neutral. And that's like a power? It's like n squared, only it's a zero. Or like n degrees. Okay, that's supposed to be superscript. Supposed to be small. Protons and neutrons are inside, what's on the outside? Electrons. Electrons. Electron orbits. Ah. Yeah. We have E minus, and we also have orbitals. Okay? It used to be okay to call these orbits or orbitals. And and what's that other word that I say never to ever use, but sometimes people do? Books. Books. What's the first one? BS. Books. 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 Big and small. Rings. Orbits is technically shells. not correct. Shells. An shells. orbit is a path. Yeah, shells. Okay. I've got this so far out of my head I can't even remember it. You should never, ever use the word shell. Then why are you telling us to remember it? I'm telling you not to. If some of your other teachers told you... Yeah, we didn't know it, so why bring it up? Chill. Chill. It's in a lot of science books, and I don't know what's in your elementary and junior high science books. If you see shell, if you see the word shell, referring to the little rings that the electrons travel in, throw that out and figure out. Time out. Stop that. Figure out. If it's an orbital, or if it's an energy level, those are the only things you need to know. And the only reason for that is they're the ones that your chemistry teacher in college are going to talk about. They're the ones that are real. Orbits is a shortened version of orbital. So we want to get rid of those two words. Don't ever use those. This little green circle is an orbital. You looked up Bohr model? Yep. Does it show a whole bunch of circles? Yep. Yes. Yeah, it does. So, the next thing you need is a periodic table. You need a periodic table, big time. Because I can show you in about 15 minutes. I can show you almost everything you need to know. But it's going to require that you stop talking to each other and pay attention to what I need you to pay attention to. Last time we did S, P, D, and F. And if you start at 1, you're in the S, all the way through 4, and when you get to 5, what block is that in? P. And when you get down here to 21, you're in the D. When you get down there to 57, you're in the F. That's P, D, and F. Those are the shape of the orbitals. S is a sphere like a ball. P is a goofy 8, only it's stretched out. And there's three of them. So they're this way, and then there's one through the middle coming out. And they're, they're goofy, stretched out, number eight. Infinity. And then there's another one going this way, and then the whole thing is spinning. Curvy. God only knows what direction. Okay? And then every time that these atoms bounce off of something, they spin it in a different direction. Creepy. It changes things. Kind of so it's that. not like this one is always spinning this way. It's not. It could be any which way. Okay? They go everywhere. So that's why these things turn into a cloud. You know that things that are moving fast blur. And then these things turn into a cloud. And they're about this big around. So it's just easier for us to teach kids to say, okay, there's the next one. Rather than trying to get all of this junk into everybody's head. We just go here. And then after that, we just make another one. They just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Here's the deal with the electrons. When you put the electrons in, you follow the periodic table. How many electrons did I put into the first orbital? Two. 
What's the name of the first orbital? We did this last time too. Go find electron number one. Tell me what energy level electron number one is in. The first. Almost like S1. Tell me what block it's in. P1. Go find one. What block is that? S. Ta-da. We're done with that. And then we go to orbital number two. Wait a second. I can teach you a whole bunch of stuff all at one time. We just did 1s and we put in two electrons. I'm too high. I'm going to come down a little bit. 1s, we put in two electrons. Next. If we got two electrons already on the board, what's the next electron we have to deal with? Everybody say three. Three. Where's electron number three? S. What energy level? 2s. 2. Two. And it's in the S block. S blocks can have how many electrons before they're full? Uh, 2. SPDF? Oh, yeah, 2. <laughs> 2. And then what? 5. Count them. Two, six, ten, fourteen. Cool. So we took care of two S. We put in two electrons. How many is, is our total on our diagram? Four, right? Right? One, two, three, four. And now our two S is full. Because Ooh. S's can only have two. So if that's full, we're going to need another orbital. And then we're going to need a name for it. What energy <laughs> level is it in? Three. It's in the third? Three S. Uh-oh. Three P. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. We got four electrons, Doug. Okay, so What's our next electron? Five. Go find it. Very good. And how many can you put into a P-shaped orbital? Six. Five, six, five. Why are you doing it? I'm doing it like that because it's really easy for me to check. No. It's easy to correct if all the electrons are on the equator. I can see that you got three here and three there, that's six. If you spread them all over the place, not so easy. But that's what happens in real life. Because they all have a negative charge, so they spread apart. And they spread apart evenly. As evenly as they possibly can. Okay? Is this complicated or what? Yes. Yes. There's a lot of steps. Are any of those steps super hard? No. Yes. yes. No. The hard part is keeping all these steps straight and getting it figured out while you're shopping online. I have a million and twelve other questions to go along with it, though, too. What? Sure. Hit me. How, how they first define those things? Very carefully. Yes. Very carefully. Oh, come on, Mr. Clearo. You can do better than that. <laughs> they went in and figured out how big they are based upon very early microscopes. And There's so the next question I have to ask is, why would we care? Because they're your wife. These are the building blocks of everything in the, on the planet, including the planet, and the stars, and the sun. And you. If it exists, and you can touch it, it's made out of these things. I really want to go find a 3D movie of what it looks like. Oh, of the... Uh, Right. Electrons because inside of an atom. I've only seen it two-dimensionally, like those orbitals that you're putting on the board. I've yeah. never heard the whole helicopter or uh, what do you call those things on a plane? Um, oh, yeah, the propellers? The very big go. Thank yeah. you. I, I've never seen the propeller explanation. I think that'd be kind of cool to see it in that particular viewpoint. That's kind of, kind of what you're looking at. They spin. And these rings... They're not rings. 
They're infinity signs. Oh uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> Some of them are, are balls. If they're an S, it's a sphere. It's a ball. Balls. If it's a P, it's those infinity signs. Only those are a three-dimensional object, you remember. So it would have to be like super skinny, and then it would have to get fatter at one end, kind of like a bowling pin gets skinny. And then it'd have to get bigger on the other end of that skinny part, the same as it did on the other, the one. Where a bowling pin just has a little bit on the top, it would have the same on the bottom and the top. Very much like a propeller on an old airplane. You know, the big round and then down to nothing and then a big round again. But it would have to be three-dimensional. So it'd have to be round and then skinny, like your forearm and then your wrist. And then get big like a forearm over there again. Mm -hmm. And then three of them into three different axes. And then stick them together in the center. And then throw it up in the air and spin it. Like spin it left and right and spin it forwards and backwards. Like those old time um, toys that we used to have that were just a, a stick. And then you shot the um, propeller off the top of it. Yes. Did you guys ever have those? What are those? The, the, the little stick with a propeller that you put on top and then you yank a rip cord oh, and it goes flying. Yeah, it's like a yeah. butterfly thing. Yeah, kind of. I love those. Oh, yeah. that's kind of weird. Oh, so, but that's still in two dimensions because those things stay horizontal and then they come back down. That whole thing would have to spin north and south and east and west and horizontally at the same time. They have to spin in all of those directions. So that's why this is so much simpler. This is so much easier. This follows the periodic table step by step by step. When we fill up the P and we put on six of them, if I come back over here and I write down, we put electrons into the 2P, we put six electrons in there, that means we have ten of them taken care of because four and six is ten, right? Where's element number ten on the periodic table? Yeah. Where's that? It's on the P. Noble gases, that's right. And when electrons <laughs> and when atoms combine, like my chemistry class is talking about over here, they all want to get like this so that they have their energy levels completely full. And they do that by stealing electrons or giving away electrons. That's where we're headed. What you need to know right now is this. Do I need to keep going or you got this? I think I got it. Nobody answer out loud. Figure out the answer in your head. If we've got electron number 10 taken care of, it's already on there. Which one is next and where is it? Don't answer out loud. Figure it out. Okay, say that again. I'm going to draw another orbital because this one's full. Okay. I need to know the name of the next orbital. <laughs> Don't say it out loud. <coughs> Let's do this one step at a time. Baby steps, right? <coughs> if I've got 10 done, the next one is? What comes after 10? 11. 11. When you go find 11, where do you find it? 3S. It's in the 3S. That's the question I asked you half a minute ago. If it's an S-shaped orbital, how many electrons can I put in it before it's full? Two. I now have 12 electrons in my orbital diagram. Do this? Well, how do you get the twelve? Where'd you get the twelve? I already had ten. I just put in two more. That's twelve. So I can go over here and I can count all these E's, or I can write it down over here, which makes it really easy to keep track of. But guess what? This thing over here, that's called an electron configuration. That's what we were assigned. That's what you guys were talking about before. So. Now we can put a label over here. <coughs> you
you have an electron configuration over here, and over here you have an orbital diagram. Now, you've seen all this before though, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe except for the electron configuration? Right. Did you follow me when I was doing that? You know why I did it? Yeah. So you can do it again on your own if you had to? How many electrons do we have in here? Eight. Twelve. Twelve. What element is this? Magnesium. All right. We need to do aluminum. Aluminium. So what do I have to do to change this into aluminum? Add another orbital. Which would be three p. Label it three p. And I put in six? Yeah. No. What? Oh, wait, you only need one. Aha. Uh -huh. I put in one electron. Because there's 13. 3P1, 13. You have to stop when you get to the element you're dealing with. You can follow the periodic table all the way through. If you're doing element number 50, Stop when you have 50 electrons, even if the orbital's not full. But the cool part is, if we're doing element number 50, you go look at the periodic table, element number 50 is 10. Don't answer this out loud. Can you figure out what orbital is going to be the last one and how many electrons you have to put in it? Don't say anything. Just by looking at this, I'm going to do it away at some of you. Just by looking right there, I can tell you the name of the last orbital that has electrons in it and how many electrons are in it. And you can too. I can. Uh, hang on, hang on, wait, wait, wait. Give me one of them. Give me the name of the orbital. That's going to be the five. Or 5P. P. And how many electrons are going to be in the 5P? Two. Here's the 5. This is the P block, right? And we have one electron, two electrons. There's going to be two electrons in the 5P. There's going to be two electrons in the 5S. Everything else is going to be full, right? So I don't have to worry about anything until I get to the 5P. I can just make all the rest of them full. I don't even have to think. I can just use that SPDF 261014, use the periodic table to tell me which ones to write down, first, second, third, to get me the name of the orbital, and just fill them up until you get to the 5P. You ready for this? They all start the same. If we do anything short of 13, it's already up there. Exactly like that. So if we do something past 13, we can start right here. And the only thing we have to do is do we erase that. that down what do you, which one do you want to do? Let's do 23. Michael Jordan's awesome, right? Yeah, he is. All right. So we'll do 23. I just filled up the 3P, which means it has how many? Six. Six. 12 and 6 is? So the next number is? 90. So we make another orbital. Do you want me to write them over there? Or can I just do that? Four S. Two. We go to four S, we put in two electrons, and then it's full, and then we have twenty, and then we go to twenty-one. Where's twenty-one? Wait, how did you get? Oh, never mind. Uh it's four. What is that? D four. Yep. Three D. What? Remember last time? When I stood right here, 
that I talked about, it drops right here. When you get to the D block, you have to drop one number. So you come over here, it says four, but we have to drop one number. When we're talking about this D, is this number minus one. We're talking about this D, is that number minus one. And it's going to be four. This is a 5D, because we're in the D, we had to drop. So if we're doing 75, that's in a 5D. Because if you're in the D, you have to drop. D and drop start with the same letter. Okay? So we go to the 3D, and how many do we put in there? We put in 3. Because we're doing element number 23. That's what we're trying to figure out. Right? We have to stop when we get there. Why do we have to stop when we get there? Because if we're doing element number 23, how many protons does it have? 23. 23. So it can only have 23 electrons because the protons and electrons have to equal out because all atoms have no charge. All atoms are totally neutral. Right? We talked about that last time too. Yes. Mercury. If you could do that. You can, I thought. Or is it well, Rumpel Stiltskin tried like heck, but he didn't get it done. Question online. Yes. Um, one thing that always really confused me in high school was why, and I think you might have just talked about this, why it goes 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, and then the f's seem to drop by 2 also. They do. They do. And the reason is, it takes more energy to make them do those complicated shapes that are D and F. And, and D and F are ridiculously complicated shapes. You can look them up online. I can't even describe them. I can't even tell you what they look like. They're so complicated. They are. I mean, one of them's got a donut that's around stuff and stuff that goes up through the middle and, and this big, it's a mess. <clears throat> so even trying to describe those is a pain. And the energy levels is all about how much energy it takes to make that electron travel in that shape. And my computer died and I don't know why. It's plugged in. Yeah. That one's not plugged in. Okay, so my solution to that is Well, I'm about to shut up as soon as I get these questions answered And then you're gonna have some work time today And you have to finish the math thing that you got last time on Friday You're going to have to sit down and get busy. And it would be better if you sat down and got busy with somebody that knew how to do them. So you could, sorry about that, computer died. Um, guys, the shape of the orbitals, super complicated, takes more energy. So therefore the energy level changes. Sorry. So the energy level number is different because the amount of energy required to make it travel in that goofy shape that is the D and the F drags it down. The energy input requirements are way higher, so they're in that same energy level because they have that same amount of energy, but then it sucks the energy out making them go into that goofy shape. If that makes any sense. Yes. These guys have about a half hour of class. So the assignment's on at Moto. And, and do they need to finish or have they all finished what you did on Friday? Uh, they need to finish what we did on Friday. Right. Student A, but they can still get four out of five if they turn it into there tomorrow. And then it goes down to three out of five and so on. But so far it's just Emily and Megan that have turned theirs in. And I know more people than them understand how to do this. Yeah. 
So, anybody that's lost on what's supposed to be turned in that you did on Friday, probably should talk to the expert in the next 30 minutes, rather than sitting around and talking and then saying, oh crap, I can't do this at 7 o'clock tonight. Yeah, Emily and Megan can help you. I could help you. Nobody called my cell phone. I, I cried a tear of loneliness on Sunday and Monday because I thought you guys were going to call me. This is Pelodon's job. Megan, come here. Megan, email? Megan, put your body over here. Can I use the restroom? Yes. Megan's my friend. Uh, doesn't like you. Caitlin, Megan 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 doesn't like you. facing the wrong way. Okay. 
I'm working. I need Megan's help, though. Okay. Can you have to write this thing? No, okay. Are you talking to them? No, I don't want to talk to anybody because it's not. This is why you don't have work done today. Well, I don't want to talk to anybody. Stupid. Uh, That's okay. Oh, I don't know. It's a pretty good idea, but once you get your head going in the right direction, it's not too bad. What do you think? I was thinking I could get this up. Oh my lord, oh, Mr. Schneider! I left my iPod in the bathroom. Seven. 
And Wait, don't you have the seven one too? Don't you have the seven one? Oh, I think I did. I knew you had that one. Wait, do I need your text? That's because this isn't the one online. Oh, online that's that's that we did like as a class. This is okay. just the one that she posted in, in a moto. So So which one needs to get so then it's the middle one. Oh, okay. And then it's the angle. So basically, we have that makes sense. So I take that divided by two. So how do you find the area in the triangle? What? Uh, one half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's not going to have to do we take that time? Uh, double however many angles we have or whatever size. I think she's Or do you know how to do this? <laughs> So I'm going to take whatever I get for the uh, base or the uh, area of the area.
She's questioning you, isn't she? Yay. I don't like her. Yeah, that helps. Imagine you And then divide that by 18. Exactly. And her triangle is 20. Or this one right here is 8. Or a B. Because, like, this makes sense. So, imagine this is yours. So then you split it into that, you know? And then you draw a circle. 365. And then you draw a circle. So, basically, this. So, it's just. This stimulates each one of these. Sure! You get it? They're tiny triangles. Yeah. So, then, so oh, we always have the bottom. Yeah, okay. No, I'm joking. So you take our your triangle. The bottom of our triangles are always equal. Exactly. Yes. So is that in every case, or is that just that what we do? Basically. Mm -hmm. And then you have capital B, which is your angle B, angle A, angle C, which is always 90 degrees. Because this is right here. 90 degrees. All the time. Right triangle. Yep. So, and your A, little A, is your height, which is your size. So, like that. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Pretty much. I'm being weird on the internet. Okay. Are you listening to this one? What is that? It's a cone. I like it. Anyway, back to So basically, that, those are your parts that you have. And you have your base, which is the bottom. Yeah, the base. Which is. I don't even know if it's like it's five. She wants to do ten. So you, when you split it up, it's five for each side. So basically, it's five. Instead of twenty. Well, no. You split these in half. Oh, so it's five. Yeah, five times. Okay, so inner triangle. So we're going to find out all of this shit. So you have this. You have your angle B. Mm -hmm. And you have your 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. And you know triangles make up 180 degrees, right? So then you just minus each one. So take 180 minus. Three. Minus whatever your. Oh, I have 18. So I have 20. Which is what you have. Oh, 20. Minus your 20. Minus my. Okay. Enter. And that's it. So is that the answer for this one? Uh, no. That is your. Um, 20. 20. Wait, no. Wait, that's your base. Yeah. 
What are the odds that we can move this party over beside Vincent? And we can all play. Instead of leaving him Yeah, that'll work. Does that sound like a good plan? That'll work for you. Bring him over here. Because, like, you can't really sit in those desks and be all together. Oh, I don't care. He's, the new guy. he's not going to push his way in here. Come here, Vincent. You guys are girls. He's not going to push his no, way in. No, he's like our best friend. Then bring him over. Come here, you! I'm gonna put your hair in a ponytail again. No, she won't. She will. I, I forgot. It's not staying in my head. I just. <laughs> you, you're you're supposed to bring your laptop. Yeah. Okay. Vincent. Well, we'll yeah. 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 I need, I need you can get that chair. Kaylee. Yeah, it's been hit. You get that big chair. But that chair's shorter than you. <laughs> Okay. Okay, I need to find out that thing now. Face. Sit in that chair. Jesus. So hard. has to do all this. He has number 21. He has 21 and 34.
Yeah, the bell's about to ring. Sort of. <gasps> Don't exit out, or else I have to start the thing over. And I finally made it. Okay. So I was right here. You have better put it in And then you Okay, so cross multiply. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I can get that. Yeah, I can get that. That's a number. I'm I'm saving. I I'm just going to put freshmen on there and you guys can put in whatever they want to come. I did. Okay. And then it gives you a number. And you round it. You put it over. You Okay. Put me down. Okay, the next one I need. Yes. Okay. And then once you have that, you use your equation based on time. So you base them. It's so we have to go to a goal and you get five. Yeah. Well, Since actually it's a ten. Ten. Freshman, come here. Freshman, this way. You need to hear this from me. <laughs> SDSU is the way to go. That's where I'm going next year. Oh, okay. Next year. You're not uh, coming here next year? I'm teaching at SDSU next year. Yeah. Which yeah. is it? So is Mary. So supportive. I know. Congrats. Is that already on the station? Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, here, do I have to take this? Now you don't hear rumors from other people. Anybody wants to come?